Hi, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show. Now, I have a very interesting and different uh, episode of The Inspiration Show uh, this week because it's just me. <laughs> I actually don't have anyone to interview, uh, but what I wanted to talk about today uh, was uh, some recurring questions that keep coming up in our community. So I thought I'd address them in one of our inspiration shows uh, so that uh, I think that if one or two people are thinking this question, chances are pretty high that there are many other people thinking the same thing. Uh, because what seems to be the challenge that a lot of people are facing is that uh, we're taking action towards a goal. So we're applying law of attraction and people are you know, being able to visualize, being able to feel the emotions, they're watching their mind movie, uh, they're taking actions, they're setting intentions, they seem to be doing everything right. But for some reason, it's like you're taking two steps forward and then one step back and then three steps forward and then two steps back. Uh, so there seems to be like a disconnect as to what's happening with the results. Um, and normally what this comes down to, and in my experience, uh, most of the time, the reason this is happening is because we have a, ch a childhood um, subconscious imprint or we have a limiting belief or a deep subconscious limiting belief that's running in the background of our mind uh, that is actually sabotaging our thoughts uh, so that they're not in alignment with the reality that we want to create. So uh, sometimes this uh, thought or this, this little voice that we have in our head will show up as common sense. It'll give you all the reasons why you shouldn't be stepping outside your comfort zone, why you can't achieve the wealth or the health or the relationship or the happiness or the joy or the success that you want in your life. And it seems to always give us a very compelling reason, you know, a very compelling reasons why we can't do this. So I wanted to explain a little bit about what this uh, phenomena is, what this voice is, where it comes from, how we got it, um, and then the steps that we can take to eliminate it. Uh, so first of all, most of the programming that we pick up in our lifetime normally is adopted predominantly between the ages of two and six. Now, in this age, in this part of our um, developmental stage, our brains are operating at a completely different brain frequency. And we are predominantly in what we call theta brainwave activity while we're in this age um, bracket here. So what happens is at this age, we are looking at our parents, our siblings, our caretakers, our teachers, everyone around us, and we are absorbing everything without any filter. There's nothing that's stopping it from going in and getting stored into our mind. So what we're doing is we, we're observing behaviours. We're listening what, to what people are telling us. We're looking at how, how people are reacting with each other. Um, and, we're, and we're looking at all of this and just absorbing it into our subconscious mind. Now, uh, for some of it, it's really good. Like, you know, some of it is actually serving us. So uh, I know, for example, if you see um, your mum or one of your siblings freak out and run from a snake or a spider or something that's of danger, you go, okay, note to self, I know that if I see a snake or a spider, I have to run. Um, but then there are other programs that we get put in there that aren't necessarily true, but that we take them on as our truth. And then because we take this truth on, what happens is that it then affects the way that we think and we feel and the decisions we make about these certain subjects moving forward for the rest of our lives. And because we've adapted these at such a young age, um, it their thoughts are so normal to us, we, we don't even realise that we're thinking these and they're sabotaging our success. So, for example, let me give you some examples of this. Um, let's say that, for example, when you were a child, um, your, one of your parents uh, in, a, you know, in a state of, um, of anger or frustration called you stupid. Now, it could have been something inadvertent, uh, it could be something just silly, or it could be a, like a sibling teasing you saying that you were stupid. Now, if this particular situation was also wrapped around an event that had a strong emotional charge, let's just say that when this person said this to you at that age, it really hurt you. So what happens is you take that on as your truth. So you go, well, I must be stupid. And then as you go through life, you're going through different exams, you're interacting with different people, and when things don't work out the way you want them to, or let's say that you don't get the results in the exam that you sat for, you go, see? I knew I couldn't do this because I'm stupid. 
or let's say for example and there's so many different things that, that parents can say to us which is which don't have a lot of which don't really mean but it's just maybe something that their parents told them because remember we're all operating from our own um, programs maybe that was something they were told when they were young so it's just like a knee-jerk thing that comes out and I know that if you're a parent that maybe you can relate sometimes to saying something to your children going wow that was my mother that was just talking then you know but things like you know you're stupid you know you you're um, you're pretty but you're not very smart um, you're an idiot uh, you know all the, all these types of things but it also can be a different situation as well you know, for me, um, I actually had an, a limiting belief around money that I was completely unaware that I had. And uh, back in 2000, September of, two, uh, sorry, uh, April of 2008, um, I'm in Sydney with uh, Glenn and we're, we're creating a video with a, a friend of ours there um, on how to eliminate limiting beliefs. And my friend said to me, she said, look, Natalie, I need to do this exercise with you on camera so that uh, we can show people in the video how to get you know how to get through their limiting beliefs and of course I'm like well I don't think I have any limiting beliefs <laughs> I, you know I'm a pretty positive person and uh, she said look okay well why don't we just try it with money because money seems to be uh, a, a limiting belief that most people have and you know most of our programming is around you know our parents were not particularly rich or you know we were struggling financially uh, so you know that seems to be a common limiting belief I'm like okay so we sit down and I close my eyes and she asked me a series of questions uh, which is designed to get me into my subconscious mind which is where these beliefs and programs live. Then she asked me, when did you first form your limiting belief around money? And without hesitation, I said when I was five. And I'm thinking at first, well, where did that come from? Uh, and what, it, what came up for me was a memory of being teased when I was a kid at school. Now, I'm one of eight children from a very big family. And, uh, and, and I didn't actually socialize with children outside the family until I went to school. And my maiden name is Roloff, you know, my dad is German. And so I used to get teased all the time and being, you know, Natalie, roll off the cliff and roll off the hill and, you know, you know how silly kids can be. But, uh, but what came up for me and what I noticed and observed was it was the kids, the richer kids, the kids that had more money that seemed to tease me the most. So when I was five, my little brain goes, oh, you're not a nice person if you have money. And I wanted people to like me. So I'm like, I don't, you know, so I had this, you know, opinion that money was bad or that if you had money that you weren't a nice person. And of course, you know, when I go home, I'm part of a big family. And so uh, we weren't poor by any step, by any means. Um, but, you know, whenever there was any stress in the household, it was often around money. And so that was my programming around that as well. So this is my whole, you know, my whole belief system was that money's bad. On a certain level and so uh, when I went through this process and this memory come up for me um, we then you know went through a clearing of it and uh, and I remember coming out of that and I had tears coming down my, my face because I was like wow like dominoes like all these decisions and these memories and these thoughts of things that I would say and, and decisions I had made about my career and the and you know my relationships and everything that was tainted by my perception that money was bad it was just it was crazy right so uh and i remember like even when glenn and i would talk about money it would always be this really stressful conversation for, for no particular reason at all and and this helped me realize that i was just emulating my parents behavior so i'm wondering when it comes to any area of your life that you've been trying to work forward and trying to strive and, and be successful in that you always seem to be coming up and butting up against a wall or just not quite getting over the, the finish line, what kind of thoughts are you thinking that are holding you back from success? You know, do you have a limiting belief um, that you will never be loved or you'll never be loved the way that you want or that um, somehow you're not worthy of success or financial success or love? Um, maybe you think you don't deserve um, on some level, you know, the success that that's your birthright to have right now. So, uh, you know, I want you to think about, you know, those kind of uh, thoughts that come up for you. Now, when it comes to our limiting beliefs and these childhood imprints that we have, um, being aware of what they are is like the first step. But then, of course, we need to go through a process of being trying to, to, to eliminate them from our, you know, from our subconscious mind and to clear them so that we can get rid of these old neural pathways 
uh, that these, these thoughts keep you know traveling along um, and we can create new thoughts and new neural pathways so that when we start to take action towards our goals what happens is that these new empowering thoughts are in alignment with this new future that we want to create when we have those thoughts then they are the ones that come up for us when they come up for us then of course our actions will also be in alignment with that now when our thoughts and actions are in alignment with this new reality that we want to create and these new empowering thoughts what happens is, is that we you know we're all made up of energy we start to resonate or vibrate at a certain frequency out into the universe and so therefore whatever is a vibrational match to that energy that we're giving out we are then starting to attract back what we need to be able to create that as our reality in our world so what I'd like to do is actually announce for you that I'm actually going to be running some um, online masterclasses over the next um, couple of weeks and uh, in these masterclasses I actually have a special guest coming on with me a friend of mine Maury Zelkovich who's a brain scientist uh, he's our in-house brain scientist and we've done a lot of work with him but we're going to be del delving deep into the science of the brain um, and we're also going to be going over several things that's going to help you move through these childhood imprints get past these limiting thought processes so that you can create the life that you want so uh, on in the master classes I'm going to be covering things like three daily brain fitness exercises for peak performance so you'll actually have specific exercises that you'll be able to do on the master class that you can then do over and over again in your own spare time so that you can take these on as a as a habit to make sure that you've got your thoughts in alignment with this new future that you want I'm also going to be uh, get telling you how to get your mind on side in seconds so again this is this masterclass is not me just and, and Maury just speaking at you this is very interactive and what we want to do is give you tools that you can use and take with you so you can do outside of that outside of the masterclass and that you can continue to move moving forward we're also going to be going through the surprising truth about your inner conflict now this is where we get into some of the science behind how these are adopted uh, why they are so ingrained in our mind and what we can do to release them and then we'll also be going through the secret of effortless personal growth so this is where you'll have long-term lifetime reprogramming of our thought processes and we'll be changing our brain and we should be showing you some science on how to do that um, so that you can uh, completely change the way that you think uh, which means that you will completely change the outcomes in your life as well so I'm very excited to be able to offer these masterclasses to you they are free uh, but each of the classes have a specific amount of, of spots available so if you click on the banner to the side here if you're watching this online or the banner underneath if you're watching this on the app uh, when you go through to the next page you'll be able to choose the date and the time that suits you most um, so make sure that you secure your spot remember it's free um, and there are a couple of bonuses that you will also receive as a, as a result of re registering for the masterclass and uh, what we'll do is we'll send them to you in email uh, after you register uh, so click on the banner choose your time and date um, I look forward to uh, going through this training with you um, it is my gift to you and I look forward to helping you really make 2016 an amazing year for you uh, and to completely change the outcomes that you have. So if you're feeling frustrated, I encourage you to register for those masterclasses. So I also encourage you to share this video and you can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons on this page as well. So until next time or until I see you on the masterclass, remember to, to live large, choose courageously and love without limits. We'll see you soon.